Hello and welcome to the Stephanie Herman Show. Today's show we're going to be delving into style and showing you how your whole persona can change from the inside out. And we will be doing transformations and showing you how important it is to have style in your life. Let me tell you a story. I was having a massage and I looked up at the massage therapist and all I could see was hair. There was this hippie hairdo with beard and mustache hidden behind this beautiful face. So I asked him if he would like to be a model for our hair transformation show today. And he said yes. And what you will be seeing today is the look of a hippie look transformed into a Brad Pitt look. And also we've had the soulful sound of Tammy Brown singing It's a Man's World. And style is not just the way you get your hair done or the outfit you're wearing, but it's also how you perceive yourself and how you feel from the inside out and how taking time to stay in shape is really important for you. It's important for your style and important for your health. And I have a question for you. Do you ever have problems with your computer and you need to know more information? Well, we have little tips and tools on how to use your computer in a more effective and efficient way. So get ready to have a wonderful time with us for the Stephanie Herman Show. Okay, let's delve into style right now with Sherry Khalil of Procreation Salon. And we're going to talk about hair and style and color and changing and transformation. Sherry, it's great having you. Thank, Thank you, Thank Stephanie. You. So good to be here. I'm really excited to be here. Got some exciting stuff to show you. Oh, I can't wait to see the transformations Absolutely. you've made. Absolutely. So let's lo know more about you as a hairstylist, how you got started. Career change for me. I was in the corporate world for more than 10 years and decided that I wanted to do something different and be more creative and actually just have more control over my life and more my direction. So um, it was just something that always interested me. And my grandfather was a teacher and a barber. And my mother taught in her field and was interested in hair and stuff. She never went into it. But I did find out that that was one of her dreams was to have her own salon. So oh, wow. <laughs> vicariously. So you went to Skyline College to learn how yes. to Skyline be a College stylist. up in San Bruno. Mm -hmm. We have a full salon, uh, cosmetology, spa, massage program now. It's a college. It's an actual college. It's a college. junior college. Mm -hmm. And you teach there now? I do teach there part-time. I've done so off and on for since about 2006. And Skyline College is doing something amazing right now. You were telling me about that. We are. Tell I'm very me. excited about it. Is this a secret or can we let it's our audience It's not a secret. Um, we have actually initiated a uh, student salon success program where students can actually go into salons while they're in school. They have to meet certain criteria as well as do the salons. And they can work alongside and see the real world and what they can expect when they get out. It's very good for matchmaking for the appropriate stylist or student with where they may be going after. How long have you been a hairstylist? About 21 years now. Wow. And when did you start Procreation Salon in, in San Red, Carlos? San Carlos, 1997. California. 1997. Wow. So almost 15 years. And your specialty is everything. Well. She does makeup too. <laughs> <laughs> Color. My, my forte is pretty much. And I like the teaching aspect as well. So I tried to incorporate all into one. So what do you believe about style? Do you feel that, you know, when you work with people and you see them come in and they come in with a certain look and an insecurity maybe and you transform them into this vision of what they want to be or a vision that they'd never even expected to be and you see such a transformation, it must be very exciting. It, it really is gratifying. That's the most gratifying part, I think, um, to see someone and their mood when they come in sometimes versus their mood when they leave. And they have a completely different aura about them, a sense of confidence. And um, yeah, it, it's very exciting. That part's really gratifying. I mean, it's in fact, besides doing the technical stuff of it, but the personal relationships that you develop along the way is very rewarding. And you believe that people should 
experience a change of style in their life in order to have this confidence? Well, my tagline is evolution of style, so I guess I'd have to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's important. Everyone changes, and you need to change. That's the one constant that there will be, so right. change with it as gracefully as possible. Right, keep it up. So tell me a little bit about Samantha, one of the models. Samantha. How did you meet Samantha? Wow, Samantha was just um, by chance. I met her at a restaurant in town, and she had commented about my look, and so we got to talking, and I looked at her, and I thought, wow, mm, makeover. <laughs> 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 my favorite thing to do. So we started chatting, and she was more than willing. I originally had started out with one idea for her. She had longer hair, and she wasn't really ready to go short, even though I knew she kind of needed to. <laughs> How did you talk her into that? I didn't. <gasps> Oh, okay. She came in. You gave her the confidence. I showed her some photos of some stuff, and she actually picked the style. So I was very excited because I got to do something really completely different for Samantha. So we're going to be seeing before pictures and after pictures. Yes, it's just you will. amazing. Funny thing is when I got done with her, a lot of people mistook her for me because I was blonde. So she got, yeah. she complimented your look, and she got it. <laughs> A <laughs> little different hairstyle, though. Different, right. a, little, um, a little more bold than I can probably do at this point so in my life. So tell me a little bit about, you know, I saw the after photos, and it was shorter on one side and longer. Was that difficult to, did you have to shave one side? Pretty much did. Mm -hmm. um, not shave it down, but cut very short, very, and very the, short. And the colors, but the But you'll rooster. see a lot of versatility in it because of the various ways she can wear it, whether she mm. wants to expose that so much or not. Mm -hmm. Was she very happy afterwards? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I got about 25,000 text messages from her That's that cute. night, as a matter of fact, and the next day. So, yeah, she was very, very That's pleased. Cute. Well, you know, I met Danny, the other male model. I was getting this amazing massage, and he had this hippie hairdo, and the hair was in front of the face, and he had the beard and the mustache, and, and I looked up at one point, and I was like, oh, my God, he's got this gorgeous face that's hiding behind all this hair, and I said, would you be interested in being a hair model? And he was very easy. Oh, yeah, sure, no problem, you know. Now those massage therapists, they're always super easy, oh <laughs> which is great, God. right? <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what awesome. you did. They both were really, really, and he waited. He was so patient. He had been wanting to get his hair cut for the longest time, and the dates and the scheduling was difficult, but he waited and... Uh, like two months. <laughs> yeah, like two months. So I had plenty to work with by the time he did come in. So. And so you changed the color? I changed everything on both of them in one day and did the, the photo shoot all in one day. So, yeah, it was, it was wonderful. It was good. I mean, we all worked together very well. And I think he was pleased. I don't know if he recognized himself too much. He might have had to adjust to that a little bit. But well, I met his, his wife. wife. was happy, so. Yes, she said, <laughs> That's she always said good. thanked me and thanked you. Exactly. For him, yes. But, okay, so the chisel of the beard was beautiful. Thank and you. I hear sometimes it's hard to dye the beard. Well, I have to admit, we had inspiration. From Brad Pitt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the cover, I think, of W Magazine or something, and I was like, okay, we're going to go with this type of thing. So, um, And we weren't sure about the facial hair, but he had the facial hair, so I said, why not? Facial hair might be kind of coming back. So we did, and I just cleaned it up and applied it very delicately with a sponge. Wow. So do you think he's going to come back now to keep I this I certainly look? hope so, because he looks really good now. He really <laughs> he looks does. Good. He really does. So tell me a little bit about the school again. If people want to become a hairstylist or hair colorist, how many years does it take? It's a 1,600-hour program. And once you pass you the 1,600 year hours, years it depends on how often you're at school right. to try to get those 1,600 hours in. And then you, it's a matter of getting a date, and then you take a written and a practical test through the state of California. And you've been teaching there how long? I've been teaching on and off since about 2006, I believe. So. so what would you like to tell our audiences in reference to the importance of style and hair? I think it's a total package. You know, an image is very important. Um, it's the first thing people see of you. So that's your first impression. A lot of people come to me because they see me in the window of my salon. So it's that visible, that's that visual first visual, I think, that really draws people in. And I think it just send, it gives you a sense of confidence when it's like if your hair looks good, you feel good. So it's a matter of feeling good as well from the inside out. So. Right. 
Sherry. Starting from the outside in. <laughs> inside out and then outside, outside in. in and everything. Sherry, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, And Stephanie. you did a marvelous pleasure. job. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Talking about style and Brad Pitt, we have with us Tammy Brown with her soulful sound singing It's a Man's World. So come sit back and listen to this gorgeous voice. This is a man's world. This is a man's world. Oh, but it wouldn't be nothing. Without a woman or girl Take us over the road. Man made the train. Carry the heavy load. Man made the electric lights. Yeah. To take us out of the dark. Man made the boat for the water. Like Noah made the ark. This is a man. should we talk about next? How about the positive results in taking care of your body? When's the last time you really took time to take care of your body? Do you feel it's important enough to take care of your body? Have you ever experienced making that New Year's resolution of, okay, now I'm going to really get in shape. I'm going to go on a diet. I'm going to start this new fitness regime and you're motivated. And then all of a sudden, two or three weeks later, reality takes over. You start to feel that exercise is boring. You start realizing how much time it takes to really work out. You have to drive to wherever you're going to work out, and then you've got to get into your workout clothes, the time it takes to actually work out. Then you have to shower, get back into your regular clothes, and then drive back to where you're going to go. Well, I have a simple solution, and that simple solution is you need to believe that you matter. You need to believe the importance of taking care of you. Peter Pan said, 
believe you can fly, just think happy thoughts and you can fly. It's as simple as that. It takes a second step, and that is to build a habit. And what does it take to build a habit? It takes six weeks, researchers say, to build a habit. But it takes discipline to get to the six weeks of the habit. So you really need to stay disciplined in order to build that habit. And then once you start working out after six weeks, you'll see that your body is starting to change and it'll motivate you to keep going. What's the importance of staying in shape? Well, it's really good for your health. It lowers your cholesterol. It lowers your blood pressure or maintains normal blood pressure. It relieves pain caused by other problems. And it is age-defying. You can stay young and look and feel young, too. It is very true. And once you aerobically work out, it starts stimulating the endorphins in your brain. And then the circulation going to the brain makes you feel more intelligent and focused. And it's a stress reliever, and it's fabulous. I highly recommend that you take care of yourself now. But when you do, just remember. Don't overreach your goals. Make realistic goals in your fitness regime, goals that you can stick to. It's okay to take baby steps. It can happen. You can become the best body that you want to be. It is your goals that you are trying to reach. Today, we're so happy to have with us a computer wizard, Nick Razlukin who's from Russia and has been here. Nick, hello. So Hi. glad you're here. Tell me, how long have you been here from Russia? It will have been eight years this summer. OK. And you're from Moscow. Right. Yep. And what made you come to the Bay Area? Well, I had a chance to come, and I decided to, to try, to give it a try. My father uh, had been living here for uh, some 27, 28 years by then, I want to say. So that um, that gave me a reason to come. And, did and to you know English when you came? Yes, I did. Okay, most, most, of, most of it. And you're from the Conservatory of Music, playing the trombone and piano. That in was Russia. my th yes. First. That was my first career. My my early your background is music. your first life and your second life. You've had how many lives already now? <laughs> I'm on the third now. Okay, there you go. And the audio engineering? That, that, was was my, that was my second career, correct, yes. That's, and that's, incidentally, at, at that same time as when I got into computers. So you have many passions. I do. You do, yes. which is wonderful. I have to let our audiences know that I met Nick because I had a virus on my computer, and my computer was dead, and I really needed my computer. And I opened up the yellow pages, and I just glanced through. I made a couple of phone calls, and the third phone call was to, the, to Nick. And the second I heard his voice, I felt trust. Thank you. And I still feel trust. And not only that, but he's fixed my computer that I was going to throw out. And I had a very bad virus. And he fixed my computer and my daughter's at the same time as if he was playing a concerto, <laughs> and you did a great job. So can you let our audiences know possibly three things that is very important for understanding computers better? Sure. Well, um, as I go, and you, you might have guessed that I've, I've seen a lot of computers. I see, I see a lot of computers every day. Um, the most common problem, of course, is what you had, which is a virus. Uh, yes, a virus <laughs> for PCs, not, as, not, not so much for Macs, not, at least it used to be that way, not anymore. But um, the three things that I believe every computer should have really would be backup, security, and uh, anything to provide stable power. And I, I'm listing them in order of preference, in order of priority. Backup, of course, is, is paramount. You can you can't go without a backup unless you can afford to throw your computer out the window the second something goes wrong. Or but you still need all that information. You do, yes, and that's why I want to, everything to be backed up. 
and uh, well, security, of course, it's very important to maintain your computer up to date with security updates for both your operating system and for the security system that, that you have in place. Hopefully, have some. If you don't, you better get one. Um, th that's just the you know you don't you can't stay online without an anti a good antivirus a comprehensive solution. Well, to there, there are so many antiviruses to choose from, and there's so many that are trying to sell you. Right. And one time I remember I had an antivirus one that didn't was not compatible with AOL, and then I had a problem. Yes, with all the research that goes into it, with all the due diligence that you yourself would have to. If you if you want to if you want somebody to have fixing your computers, then you you just have to s to find somebody who you, you can trust. Well, <laughs> one of the options, yes. Um, or if you want to research it a little bit better yourself, one thing I can tell you is that this is true of any um, setup, big or small, corporations or home computers alike. You're more secure, all other things being equal. You're much more secure if you're not using something very well known. And the, the reason is simple. That's anywhere from Google down to a, a small office uh, in Palo Alto somewhere or San Mateo. This is, this is true of everybody. Uh, how that translates into home computer use? Well, most computers come preloaded out of the box with a number of security systems. I won't give you the names, but there's two or three that come on any computer, every computer. And those, incidentally, are being targeted the most, of course. Oh. That's, that, that is the reason why, in the past, uh, Apple computers were not, did not have such a, a, such a viral problem, so to say, is because you're targeting one specific system, you're targeting or one specific platform. Your virus is a program created by very smart people, and that program has certain purposes, certain goals, but one certain program can only function under one on one platform under one system, and that would be either Windows or, or a Mac. In the past, when we had a 80-20, 90-10 ratio, then Macs weren't uh, of as much interest to hackers and, and virus creators. Not anymore. Uh, so we have a new world now. <laughs> we do, yes. It, it, you, have to, you have to install an antivirus on a Mac computer if you own one, just as well as on a PC. And you were talking about the backup. Now, I, I know you don't mean just one backup. No, no. The, the more the better here. But uh, obviously, the, the most convenient option would be uh, an external hard drive or any storage device hard drive being the most suitable that's sitting right next to the computer, which incidentally is the problem. Is if there's a fire or any other natural disaster, you, your backup goes and your, your original goes, which is why uh, an off-site backup, this fashion, new fashionable term cloud, computing cloud backup, is considered more secure and at the same time it's less secure. And the reason I say this is because when you're backing up that way, your data leaves your computer, it leaves your office if you're operating a business, and uh, you have, at that point, you have no control over what happens to that copy. Right. So, I mean, a, a lot of. A law yes, firm a would not do no, that. No, no, <laughs> no. In a corporate environment, nobody, right. it, it, there's no chance that the data leaves the office, any data. In fact, most of the security efforts are being made to prevent that same thing from happening. So you'd have to, if you're, if you're big enough, if you're doing serious business, if you're a big office, you have to have your own uh, backup system, which not, doesn't have to be on site. You can be your your you East Coast branch will it, talk right. to your West Coast branch, and you, you'd be, you know. And the other thing that you mentioned to me that I thought was really interesting is the power. Yes, power. We get our power from PG&E here, and uh, if you had a power meter, you would see that it's really never 110 as it's supposed to be. It goes up and down between anywhere between 80 and uh, 100 and God knows. And uh, most importantly, there are power outages. I, uh, one colleague of mine had an interesting theory on uh, small earthquakes down south affecting our power here, and there is a map to monitor. There's one. She had one map on one screen 
with, and that was the map of earthquakes. And then on her other screen, she had all the all the power sources showing the the current power being output. So I I don't quite buy into that theory. But the the problem is that we number one we don't have a sta very stable power here. Number two, there are power outages all the time, Sh very especially particularly short-term power outages. Those can be deadly for computers. And, and they can go unnoticed to your eye because lights need a few milliseconds or uh, I'd say a couple of hundred milliseconds uh, so that you, know, you notice that they go off and back on. And then as we get, a, if we're in the middle of a heat wave here sometime in the summer in the Bay Area, that's when we're going to start getting the calls of my computer's not turning on. That's, That's the when first your business sign. is the best. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I wish it was more fun than that. But uh, when, a compu when your computer is not turning on at all, when it's dead in the water, the first thing to think of is the, is the power supply. Mm -hmm. it, they're designed in a way where the power supply will go out but prevent further damage. And power supply is a relatively easy fix. It's, it's not a very expensive part, and it's easy to, to replace on a common standard uh, mini tower, let's say. So, and then of course that's not always the case. Sometimes there's more. Sometimes there's a motherboard. Sometimes there's, there's a hard. That's the same hard drive that you'd like to save. This is more important for desktop computers rather than laptops, just because laptops have their own little uninterruptible power source, huh. which is their battery. Yeah. And what happens when the battery goes dead? Well, that's when you get in trouble. Uh, right. They're designed. Uh, both PCs and Macs are designed to go to sleep or to hibernate. It'll sleep first and it'll hibernate. Well, if you have any problems with your computer, this is the man to see, Nick Razluk, and thank you so much for joining us Pleasure's today. Pleasure's all mine, absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for joining us for the Stephanie Herman Show, and I do hope you had a wonderful time and you learned a little bit about style and staying in shape and got entertained with music and also know more about computers. So I hope to see you soon. Take care for now.